Hey, folks, welcome back. I'm David Dalian, your host, and you are watching Earth Sky. Today, we are following along on a, a, a deep space 12 year odyssey. Lucy, the Lucy mission, is out looking at asteroids. And just this week, it visited asteroid Donald Johansson. We've got the image here, and we're hoping for more images very soon. But what we've the special thing we've got today is the principal investigator for this mission, Hal Levison from the Southwest Research Institute. Hal, welcome, oh, welcome, welcome. Thank, welcome. You, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Very much a pleasure to have you. Can you let's start off and can you tell us what Lucy is, what it's doing, and etc.? What are we going to find out there? So, there we go. Uh, yeah, Lucy is a robotic mission. Uh, funded by NASA to study a population of asteroids called Trojan asteroids, which lead and follow Jupiter in its orbit by 60 degrees. The way to think about it and, um, is that if you put an object, oh, very good, a graphic. If you ah. put, those, swar those swarms are actually real objects that you're seeing. And um, if you put an object 60 degrees before or behind a mass of planet, the way to think about it is the gravitational effect of the sun and the planet and the centripetal force of orbit sort of all can cancels out and, and the object put there will stay there forever. It's a stable region. So those, okay. those objects are primordial ancient objects left over from the beginning of the solar system they have vital clues about how the planets formed, right? Um, mm -hmm. And particularly the way I look at the small body population is that, you know, planets, once they formed, have evolved on their own because of internal processes. These objects have pretty much been frozen in time since mm -hmm. the birth of the solar system. So if you really want to understand how the planets came to be, that's the place to go. Which is why right. four expensive. billion years ago, four billion years ago, exactly right. But you didn't go there first. We visited asteroid uh, Donald Johansson, and we have a really nice graphic of that. If we can get it up on the screen, why don't you tell us what we're looking at here? Describe this. This is amazing. Uh, I, to be honest with you, we don't exactly <laughs> know what we're looking at yet. Oh, right. yeah, this object. Um, you know, if you look at this object, it looks like many of the asteroids, the bilobe structure, the contact mm -hmm. binary, right? It looks like uh, Totatus and it looks like Borelli and a lot of other things. What's really we're scratching our head about is the um, neck between the two bodies mm -hmm. is very odd. You can see a ridge. It's not really a ridge. It's sort of like cone. There are two of them between these two objects. And that's Not really surprising. The yeah. analogy that I use is that it sort of looks like uh, an ice cream cone, a stacked ice cream cones on the side, right? Where you actually not only have one ridge, but you have two ridges and yeah. then a glob sitting on the end. And we have spent a lot of time trying to talking about how you would make such a thing. It really is a surprise. I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with. I, I assume it's going to be a lot of mathematical models and it's going to take some crunch time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when are we going to get to see more pictures from Lucy? I yep. that's they're so beautiful and so full of wonder. Well, I guess. Yeah. So uh, we will probably have another press release next week. Uh, okay. Lucy has um, four or five different kinds of instruments. Uh, on board uh, from uh, from panchromatic cameras, which you're seeing some results of there, to mm -hmm. color imagers, to near-infrared spectrographs. So it's going to tell us something about the composition of these things, to thermal spectrographs that are going to tell us about the thermal properties, how fluffy the surface is. Mm -hmm. uh, all that stuff is being crunched uh, right now. So we should get some more data out in the next week or two. Okay, and when that data is out, folks, we'll have it at earthsky.org. Check back. Look for, it, look for it in your newsletter. If you're not subscribed, please do. You're missing out. Um, now, how you guys are visiting eight different Trojans on this mission, and yeah. they all have sort of 
different compositions or do they? We don't know that much about them. So why is it important that we go to a variety? Um, if you look at the Trojans, one of the surprising things, you so, saw that original graphic showing the orbits. They actually occupy a really small region of space. Mm -hmm. But when you're studying them from the ground, they look very different from one another. The colors are different, uh, mainly. And so I think what that's telling us is that this material formed at different places in the solar system. Oh. And then we're all mixed together as the planets evolve. Right? So if you're trying to decouple or try to uh, understand um, how that diversity happened, the thing to do is to go and study all the objects that you can in order to be able to compare them from one another. So we're basically looking at the geology of these very early solar system objects. And then what do we do with that data once we've got it? I assume we well, compare it to- the geology. I'm sorry, I stepped on. Please, no, please. We're, we're, we're going to look at the geology, which is going to tell us things about how old the surfaces are, hmm. right? Uh, what the rest of the population looks like after all the craters are formed by impact. So if you want to try to understand what the small population in this region looks like, you count craters, right? We're going to be able to measure uh, uh, color, uh, colors and compositions, right? Which hopefully will lead us to conclude uh, the temperature at which these objects formed, which then will tell us where they formed, right? And uh, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Wow. This is just absolutely fascinating to me um let's see um now there is mention in the literature for lucy of finding satellites moonlets i guess and rings maybe around some of these objects i noticed that they're that that donald johansson i believe is about five miles long it and is eight kilometers so it's about yeah five eight miles. kilometers is about five i think about yeah. five miles these other objects are much larger. So tell us about, do we expect to see that? And if we do, why is that important for understanding the geological process? So the, the satellites and rings are particularly important when it comes to um, how these things form, right? We think that collisional processes, let me take a step back, right? Yeah. Planets form uh, by two main processes. One is how they orbit, and the other is they run into each other and to grow. So the collisional processes are important and the dynamical processes are important, okay. right? And while yeah. we're studying the rings and the size distributions of these objects, again, craters are gonna give us that, and their chemistry, that gives us important vital clues to how the planets actually were assembled. Oh, wow. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is this is crime scene investigation writ as large as you can write it, basically. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's the deduction. CSI. <laughs> okay, so I know you can't tell us what you'll find before you find it, but you must be geared for some particular, you're hoping to see some things. Well, as I, already, I, as I already said, we're hoping to uh, sort of tease out where these things formed right uh, right and uh what the conditions were like where they formed right but look this is a mission of exploration as you said we've never seen trojans before not only that because but because of their proximity to your to jupiter they are the only small body population in the solar system that isn't giving us meteorites oh so, so he's at home so we know nothing about what these things are oh right and wow. so it's really a mission of exploration right and you know the surprising thing is going to be we're going to be surprised or maybe <laughs> i should say the not the thing that's not surprising is that we're going to be surprised and i'd be disappointed if we didn't come away with this with a a, a totally revolutionary view of how the solar system evolved it that's would why be it would be surprising if we didn't, I guess, is the way yeah, to put that. That's right. So, so let's, you know, to wrap this up, where do the the geologists of the solar system, where are you guys going next? What what missions would you like to conduct once we've finished this 12-year journey? 
uh, this I, odyssey. Again, my focus has always been on the small body populations, right? I would love to see another mission to the Kuiper Belt. Mm -hmm. Right, Arakoth was an amazing place, right? And you know, trying to understand how uh, unique that really flattened object is, right, mm -hmm. uh, would tell us a lot about how these objects formed. Um, so there are many places that we could go to sort of put this story together. So much to do, so much to see, so little time. Speaking of time, we're about out of it. So, Hal, thank you again so much for being here. You've, you've really, you know, you've given us a wonderful view of what Lucy is looking for, what it's found so far, and what it might find in the future. It was my pleasure. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. And, folks, if you want more Lucy, if you want more science in these, these times, earthsky.org is the place to get it. Come and visit us. Subscribe. Like the video if you got anything out of this. Please visit us at earthsky.org and get that newsletter going for you. One Earth, One Sky, Earth Sky. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time.